Hey everyone, wanted to do another tutorial video. Uh, this one is going to focus on setting up the DAISY expansion market for your server and how to configure prices and things like that. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with the DAISY expansion market. Um, you can have completely player driven stock. Um, it's very easy to set up multiple trade zones with different pricing structures and different items available. And you can even do crazy things like have a zucchini based economy instead of you know the default gold bars that come with expansion um, for a full list of how everything works go to the daisy expansion wiki i'll put the link in the description and go to the market settings file or pages and it'll tell you how every single parameter works in any of the files but I understand you know it's a little dry sometimes just reading through documentation and some people just learn better visually so I thought I'd still take the time make this video and try to clear things up for some people because this really is a powerful mod and I think people should definitely give it a shot okay so once you have Daisy expansion running on your server and you've started it up for the first time Inside your server profile folder, a folder called expansion mod will be created. And this has a whole bunch of folders and files that pertain to expansion and configuring everything. Uh, we'll start with going into the settings folder, which has a lot of settings if you're running the entire thing, but we're just going to look at market settings for now. Now, you notice immediately at the top of this file there's market ammo boxes this is for the market to know if a player buys this ammo box that this is the ammo that it contains now if you're just running vanilla items and expansion weapons uh, this is already set up for you and you don't have to do anything but if you're gonna do like snafu or Morty's weapons uh, you have to add the modded ammo boxes into this file. Otherwise, if a player were to buy this ammo box, it just wouldn't give them ammo when they open it. This tells the game what ammo is inside the ammo box whenever you buy it. Then, of course, uh, as we continue on, there's a lot of stuff about the uh, ATM system that works with expansion. Uh, I'm not going to focus much on it. If you're curious about that, you can look at the wiki for the market settings. Um, sell price percent, 75%. So whatever price you set an item to be, you know, say it's 100 bucks for a flat cap, if you loot one, you're going to sell it to that trader for 75 And then uh, you also, if you have a vehicle trader, these are important as well. These are where the vehicles will spawn when they are purchased. There's land spawn positions for, you know, cars. Uh, there's air spawn positions for helis and there's water spawn positions for boats and if you're running Chernaris or a few other select maps this is already configured for you you don't have to do anything unless you wanted to add your own traders and then there's also a lot of stuff about if you wanted to customize the colors of the interface that pops up whenever you work with the trader um, I'm not gonna go over that uh, if you're curious about it you can kind of play around with it um, or visit the wiki again it'll explain what you're looking at here and how to work with all that okay now that we've done an overview of the market settings let's go back to our server and go back up to the expansion mod folder and 
the expansion market for configuring it you need to look at files that are in the market folder the traders folder and the trader zones folder these three folders contain files that all work in sync together to configure your market for your server so we'll start with the market folder and these are the categories that will show up whenever you access a trader and inside these categories will be your items this is where you set your prices set how many can possibly be in stock and things like that so in its stock percent this is the initial amount that the trader should have in stock of an item whenever you first initialize the mod so this is 75 percent of the max stock threshold whatever you set that at it's going to be 75 percent of that now these four parameters max price and min price max stock and min stock work in tandem with each other they uh, kind of depend on each other um, if an item is at maximum stock it will be at the minimum price if it's at minimum stock it will be at the maximum price and it's a sliding scale so the closer you get to minimum stock the closer you're going to get to the maximum price accordingly and vice versa uh, sell price percent negative one the negative one means it will use that sell price percent value that was in the market settings Jason which by default is 75 percent so if I find a FAL or an LAR in game is the name of it um, it will sell for 1500 rubles whenever I sell it to trader If you want it to be more or less, you can change it to whatever you want. 60%, 40%. So you can change it by individual items. And then there's also spawn attachments. You can add the butt stock, the magazine, a scope. You know, you can configure a complete weapon that can be purchased from trader using this attachments section and then variance um, isn't really as important in this particular context but like clothing you know you don't want an individual entry for a black flat cap and a brown one and a gray one you can just list all of that inside the variance and whenever you pick click on flat cap it'll have a drop down menu over here in the lower right that will show you all of the different items that you can pick for the same price now let's take a look at the files within the trader folder the traders uh, files are the physical entities that you actually interact with on the map and they're basically just collections of these category files that we went over that are in the market folder so let's look at the weapons file and you can see it lists out the currencies that this trader accepts and the categories that this trader will display and you'll see below that it also has individual items listed uh, you can do this either way you can either have it display an entire category and everything that's within it or you can list the items individually if you wanted say a specific pistols trader a specific sniper rifles trader you could remove those specific items if you wanted to um, 
or say you wanted a black market trader that would have the more high powered assault rifles and submachine guns and things like that but you still wanted some assault rifles and submachine guns to be available at your regular trader you can configure it that way as well so let's look at the items list for just a minute you'll see it has this little number one after it that means that this item can be purchased and sold at this trader if you wanted to make it to where the player can only buy this item from the trader you would set this number to zero and if you wanted it to where the player can only sell this item to trader you would set it to two the number three is a special case where this item is sold by this trader but it can only be sold as an attachment to another weapon so if you buy you know an m4a1 you can purchase it with a 10 round c mag if you so choose this just makes it a little bit cleaner you don't have these six categories or seven categories six yep i I can count one two three four five six uh, 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 six categories anyway uh, you don't have these six categories also showing up but these items can be purchased as attachments to other items Finally, let's take a look at the Trader Zones folder. Inside the Trader Zones folder, think of the Trader Zone as like a department store. You know, and the Trader's files are like the different sections of that department store. You've got, you know, sporting goods and a pharmacy and a clothing area and like a little supermarket sometimes. Um, that's kind of how this works um, a trader that is not within a trader zone will not function um, so let's look at one of the trader zone files uh, this sets the center point of the trader zone and how big it is you can set the buy price percent and the sell price percent for that trader zone and by default, you know, you've got that minus one again. That's going to use the uh, setting that's in the market settings file. Um, and then you have stock and you've got all these items. So the number after each item that's listed under stock that's how many of that particular item is in stock um, and this file keeps track of it automatically um, it's it's a little bit difficult to navigate because nothing is alphabetized um, the program doesn't really care about that uh, it, the program can read it just fine it's a little bit difficult to find it as a human so if you're going to be trying to manually edit this, uh, Control F is going to be your best friend. But uh, you'll notice that these items all have their stock already configured. Um, remember the first video that I did where the uh, trader, when I first accessed it, all the items were out of stock? What you need to do to get that initial stock percent to take effect is you need to go back to your server and delete that trader zone uh, folder and then restart the server. When you restart the server, it will regenerate that trader zones folder for you automatically and it will apply this initial stock percent for you this is the easiest way to do that 
and I highly encourage that you do it that way. Um, when I started using Expansion Market, this didn't exist. So I had to go in and manually set everything. And boy howdy, was that a chore. So, you know, this mod is continually under development and the team is making improvements all the time. Now, a couple things that uh, I think are worth mentioning. Um, if you are going to be adding modded items to your trader, you know, say you load snafu weapons up on your server, um, you add the items to a category, which will then add to a trader based on these category files, but you will have to add the items to the trader zones as well if you want the item to show up. It doesn't matter if something is just in this trader file, it also has to be on the trader zone file. Another thing to note, these little commas are super super important they have to be where they need to be and they cannot be where they should not be namely this last item in the list if you put a comma in there and you save this and then you access that trader this whole file gets wiped the only thing that will still be there Is this portion the actual stock information will disappear I'm not sure why that is uh, I just know that I struggled with that a lot whenever I first started so it's in your best interest if you're going to edit any of these vanilla files to save a copy and stash it away in like a master file repository so if you do make mistakes and something like that happens where your trader zone files get wiped you can just go grab that backup um, run all of your JSON files through a validator if you can just to make sure that you didn't misplace any punctuation or anything like that and that should be everything you need to know about the gist of how the market works and how these files interact with each other. Again, if you have any specific questions, you can either ask on the expansion discord or I encourage you once again to check out the wiki and every parameter inside the files that we went over in this video will be explained in there. So if you look at those wiki pages and you still are having trouble grasping something, uh, feel free, hop in the Discord, ask around. Someone will most likely help you out and answer your questions for you. All right, guys, well, that should do it for this video. Uh, hopefully that was a helpful experience for you and you understand how these files all work with each other at this point and you will be able to configure everything for your server yourself now and uh, next video I'm gonna focus on how to set up the market from scratch on a server that doesn't have pre-configured items like this so if you're running any map other than Chernaris, Namalsk, or Takistan, you will have to set up everything from scratch. And that's what I'm going to focus on in the next video. So if that interests you, be on the lookout for that. But uh, thanks for watching. If you could give a thumbs up if this was helpful, I would much appreciate that. Take it easy.